President Mohamed Buhari has signed 16 bills into law in a bold move that will bring changes to several parts of the 1999 constitution. Among other things, the ascent of the presidency will devolve power from the federal government to the states, making it possible for states to generate and transmit electricity within their borders. Now, the president's move has been lauded by many as a long-desired win for national development, as it finally gives state governments the power to stabilize electricity within their regions. However, questions remain unanswered about how these will be implemented and what it could mean for the tech ecosystems and other sectors across the country. Well, that's our focus for today. Welcome to Business Insights on PLOS TV Africa. I am Justin Akadone. Now, first off, Nigerian businesses have been advised to optimize the benefits derivable from email marketing in order to scale up. And this advice was given by the founder of Tribe Ak, Okbeemi Emmanuel, during a webinar titled Email Marketing Trends How to Scale Up Your Business by Over 50% in 2023. The details in this report. Email is one of the oldest forms of digital communication but it is also one of the most effective marketing strategies out there. Sure, there are newer methods of communicating with your audience and customers, like social media and live chat. However, with a user base of over 4.5 billion people, email is the king of marketing channels. What is this uh, customer segment that can really leverage and um, maximize the power of tribacks? At this webinar, Okbayemi Emmanuel says Tribac's mandate is to ensure more entrepreneurs, developers and marketers have necessary digital tools to succeed in the African continent. He shares more insights. Um, different platforms, they do well in different areas, right? So I can mention some of the examples, send in blue active campaigns. So they do well in different, they have their strengths and they have their weaknesses, right? So, but um, business are always looking for, okay, for my kind of strategy that I'm implementing, which platform can give me the best of both worlds? Can I achieve, does that platform provide me deliverability very well? Do they have a very good IP reputation? Do they have, you know, they, they do, do they allow me to use my own personal domain? At the same time, you can reach as many people as possible. Um, according to some statistics, uh, at least 306 billion emails are sent and received each day as of the year 2021. And this is 2023. So, of course, these numbers would have increased by now. Leon Okbe, popularly known as Email Marketing Apostle, addresses how to manage email deliverability. He speaks alongside others who share on what businesses are looking out for when picking email marketing platforms, among other issues. What I do is, if I have a long-form copy, all right, and I send it and it lands in promotion, what I do is I remove each paragraph and test so I remove the first paragraph and I test, I see where it lands. If it lands in the inbox, then I know the particular paragraph that is responsible for my email landing in promotions. Then I know to rewrite that particular paragraph, just tweak it, and then see where it lands again. Sometimes it could be your subject line. Most of um, the email marketing platforms that you are using, they send your email through an IP address. If that IP address is listed by Google, your email will most likely land somewhere that you would not like. Generally, people love free stuff. And if you have a free offer, highlight, you know, things like the word free. What you should do for every copy that, you know, you, you're putting together is you have to think like the person that you're sending it to. So... I think for me, collaboration is key, especially, you know, when you're able to really identify that the people you want to target, you know, are in certain communities and you're able to um, show value. I think it's really strong. Currently in Nigeria, mobile technology has made marketing to be a lot easier and better for marketers because they no longer participate in verbal marketing. Instead, they market their product directly to a particular target group through the use of an email. And now to the discussion of the day. After 63 years of independence, Nigeria is still unable to supply reliable power to its citizens.
Now, the country generates only 12,522 megawatts of electricity, way below capacity for its over 200 million people, which represents about 45 of which are not connected to power. Now, in comparison, Norway, a European country of approximately 4 million people, produces 36,000 megawatts. There are many reasons for this power shortage, which include infrastructure deficit, lack of policy support, poverty and sheer complacency of some government agencies. Well, the recent development is just light at the end of this very dark tunnel. Well, joining us now to analyze this is an economist, Mokhtar Mohammed. Many thanks for joining us on Business Insights, Mokhtar. Thank you, Justin. It's always a pleasure to be on your program. All right, let's talk about uh, this new development. Uh, first of all, uh, how feasible is this and just how can we ensure workability because Nigerians have been suffering you know, in darkness, as it were, for a very long time? Yeah, it's a good development. Um, most of us have talked about the exclusive list. Uh, hopefully, the federal government will go back and also see other items be removed from the exclusive list especially in the mineral resources, um, resource control, uh, whereby every state can be able to control some of the resources that they found in their, in, is, that is found in their state. For me, it's a good development. I remember that um, some states have actually been able to generate their own plant power, but they have to transfer it to the national grid state like Aquaibon. I think even Lagos State, uh, yeah, the, uh, yeah, even Lagos State, but they have to transfer it to the national grid. So what it means that by the time they generate, they could also um, be able to generate and transmit. Now, the workability of that is um, is going to be what we, we have to watch. We have to stay. I mean, we, we need to watch it because uh, what will happen is that the National uh, Electric Electricity Regulation Commission, uh, will this state-owned um, power company be under them, or are we going to have um, a NAS state electricity regulation commission? Mm. So those are part of the things uh, I think we are still waiting for the workability of that. But outside of that, I I think it's a good development, uh, especially some state could just decide to, if state like Lagos could decide to look at the industrialized area of Lagos and say we are going to provide power for them for the industrialized area of Lagos, or could look at um, uh, um, also the um, um, also look at the the area that have more population and say, look, we are going to generate electricity for them. So it's all down to the workability, because if the state are, they would they apply for license, what are the procedure, what and what they need to do to also get licenses. Would there be state electric, um, electricity regulation commission like I just said? Mm. So all that is um, what hopefully we are we are watching, and um, hopefully we think that uh, all right. this might be resolved. All right, Mokta, let me paint uh, a scenario here because um, experts believe that uh, this ambition will actually drive uh, state government to boost uh, the economy of their state, and the power narrative would actually change with what we've had over the past decade. But the question right now would be, for instance. If uh, it was completely devolved and all states had to be provided their own electricity, how feasible can that be, judging by the fact that most states are not even viable on their own accord when they go cap in hand to the you know, federal government every month for, to fact to get um, you know, a location for, that they need to drive um, the economy of the state? If it were to be that the states are supposed to generate electricity for themselves, does it mean that some state might be suffering uh, perpetual darkness? No, I think the national grid is still there. Mm. Um, some state might be able to generate and even sell to the national grid. Uh, we don't know what they are saying. Is it both states will be able to generate and transmit, or states could only generate? We we have not gotten clear clarity on that um, aside. And when you talk about yes, uh, I think you hit the nail on the net in the head uh, when you talk about states that cannot even generate revenue, how they're going to be power plants. But we are looking at PPP. Um, the states could look at um, um, look at their state, their infrastructure, or being um, the one that can apply for this license as their own um, collateral. So definitely, I think um, it's going to be a PPP thing. It's not going to be that a state can just come up and build a power plant. 
it's capital intensive and also you need to look at the technic technicality of it. So definitely, uh, I think it's going to be a PPP. Um, no, most state, I, I think in the exception for some state, maybe like Aquaibon or Rivers, no state have commissioner for power. So are we going to begin to see commissioner for power in states? So it's, um, it's, there's a lot of work. This is just the first step. Um, so, towards, so, so, um, so, so invariably, uh, Mukta, it's not something that might just happen in the next six months or one year because there will be like a, a structural adjustment per se. Like you said, now most states don't have, uh, you know, uh, ministries for power, electricity, and all or energy as it were. Because as it is now, if they were to do that, they'll still need to go back to their state assemblies or even the national assembly to do some sort of um, legislation. I think for the National Assembly, the National Assembly have done theirs. Mm -hmm. They have to go to the State Assembly. Um, the National Assembly have given them power that states can own power plan. Uh, but we, we are clear that they can also generate and transmit. Uh, because um, as it stands now, the federal government is the sole um, distributor. I mean, they generate, they, they so re solely responsible for generation. So it's the distributing company, the discos that distribute to household. So are we going to see that play out also with states? And so those are part of the um, 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 uh, clarity we are waiting for. But I think, um, like you said, it will not be um, something that will happen in the next one to two or three months. The state also need to reject their own uh, legislation as regards those, um, this new policy that are coming in place. Unfortunately for the states also, they have um, a president elect that was also, when he was governor of Lagos State, was pushing for something like this. Um, he didn't see the light of the day. So definitely, I think um, it's a good development for the short and the long term. But uh, when you look at the financial capability of a lot of states, only very few states will be able to, to get involved in this project. Maybe you look at uh, Aquaibo, you look at Rivers, you look at Lagos, those states that are financially uh, um, stable and variable. All of that state might just struggle. But like I said, there's always a leeway of PPP, and we must be careful of those kind of PPP mm. because sometimes what has happened in the distribution company is that we saw politician hijacking it, become chairman. They didn't have the polit they didn't have the, um, the expertise or the technical the technical well being, uh, uh, or no 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 without to handle some of these um, um, projects. I think that is what they need to work at and make sure that this is is not politicized, whereby politicians of states are the ones that are now getting the license, bringing in foreigners, sitting on the board, and making the state instead of generating electricity for the states. All right, I'm glad you mentioned, um, you know, PPP, uh, public-private and partnership in all of that, uh, because uh, we've also talked about uh, the state government and, uh, you know, they're similarly... Uh, less financial muscle as it is now. I wonder how many state or how many uh, private investors would want to uh, partner with some of this state, knowing by the fact that um, they've not been able to, you know, generate enough, you know, to do their state economy. But let's just leave that for one moment and talk about um, distribution as it were. I'm still trying to like, um, you know, wrap my head surrounding uh, concerning uh, issues like um, distribution. With all of this now, how would these calls work? Well, this goes as you see, that's what we talk about competition, and that's what we've been talking about liberalization, deregulation. It brings competition. So the discos now we know that they have competitors. Either the competitors will be from the from the state government, or we will see a state government that we also have generation company and also have distribution companies. So they will it's it's, it's not um it, it, it's not straightforward because um if I want to change now to the state-owned regular and uh, distribution company how do i go about it knowing that uh, all our our, our grid are connected to the national grid they will now begin to reconnect to the state grid or we can connect to the national grid there's a lot of technicality in it and i think what most states might be doing is to get generation and pass it on to the to the distribution company and say okay you you know distribute social amount for my own people in this state you pay me I think most states will not just go into both uh, generation and distribution at the same time because there's a lot of technicality involved in it. So I think most of them might be doing generation first and then later on they might be looking at the technicality of also doing distribution. But I think at the, at the long run, it, they might be doing generation and then selling it to some of those companies that are distribution companies and telling those distribution companies to, to 
to to to in terms transmit it and use it within their own state of um, origin. So it is a good development, and um, hopefully it will work. Um, but there are a lot of challenges that will come with it, like any new uh, project will have a team challenge. Oh. But um, I I strongly believe that in the next um, couple of years we we'll see this as a game changer, especially in the area of generation and distribution of electricity in Nigeria. Okay, let's still talk about opportunities uh, that could abound from the, this uh, recent development. In my head, I'm thinking about distribution. I'm thinking about um, prepaid meters and, uh, you know, uh, that particular value chain could actually be broadened. But what other opportunities do you see in the value chain? Yeah, the value chain, you've, you've said it all. We could also begin to see prepaid. We could get companies that will say, look, uh, we are going to do prepaid meters. So individuals, we are going to get generation companies that might come and say, look, I'm only going to um, um, generate electricity and give to only Lagos Island or only Keja or in Keja, maybe small locality close there. They may have to be able to generate up to like 50 megawatt or 100 megawatt to just meet demands of um, some of it. Like what we've seen uh, most of the conglomerate do, especially the cement companies, they all generate their own electricity themselves and they use it in, uh, in their company. So we could see that uh, um, also um, play play out. So for me, I think um, that that could just be it. All right. Uh, so with all of this now, uh, state government's been able to maybe generate and even distribute uh, you know, power to residents and all of that. Would it actually change the narrative of uh, load shedding, uh, unstable power supply? Would there be really improvement in real terms yes um you, you sorry again you talked about the value chain in the first question i think maybe i didn't address that also mm. the value chain number one when you when you are coming out with a product you are creating market innovation you are creating competition the innovation will then move to profitability profitability will bring a culture remember innovation also comes with job creation Job creation also comes with profit both for the private and the public sector. Because when those people begin to pay tax, it also has a snowball effect in the public sector. So that and then the, the companies are also will be profiting. Then you, the culture that you're talking about will come to a culture whereby each individual will know what it's supposed to do. So we will we'll get the the, the, the the point of this low shading. Um, so you, you could always begin to look at companies that okay, fine. But I don't know how that works. That will work in the in the electricity sector. Hmm. I'm using an example like the telecom sector, whereby you think yeah. one network is not um, being friendly to you, then you cannot switch off to another network. So we may begin to see that play out where some people begin to say, look, um, Ikeja electricity or Equa electricity or whatever, uh, Benin electricity or Calabar electricity, you are not doing me very well. I'd rather go to the private electricity. So it creates competition. And when there's competition, there's job creation. And once the competition and job creation comes, there is value for customers. And when there is value for customers, then there must be customer satisfaction in the area of, um, uh, of production. So it's, it's going to be a win-win situation for the, for, for the Nigerians' uh, electricity consumers because I believe they suffer so, so, so much. Okay, let's just uh, s uh, spread uh, uh, some sort of uh, opportunity that would abound from all of this. That we've talked about opportunities that you know that are derivable from the sector uh, itself. But looking at looking at the real sector, looking at the manufacturing sector, over time they have been complaining that uh, uh, the, uh, you know power uh, they spend huge. Uh, uh, cost, uh, you know, you know, generating electricity by themselves for their businesses. So, how soon can we really say there is an um, uhuru for the real sectors of the economy uh, with this uh, recent development? Uh, would we would we have better ways of doing business? Would all of that be changing in Nigeria soon? I just say we've always said that the greatest challenge Nigeria has is infrastructure, mm -hmm. and when we talk about Nigeria infrastructure, we talk of power. Once we get power 
right, it will be a game changer in every area of our economy, even in the life of Nigerians. So uh, it, it, the, the, the manufacturing sector may sound to benefit from it. I think we have moved now to, um, to whereby governors can, government companies can begin to, uh, go, states, I mean, states can begin to generate. We might begin to see whereby license will be given for private sectors to also generate. Uh, so it could be some companies that will say, okay, like I said, the industrial area I want to generate for the manufacturers. Uh, if you look at the bigger conglomerates, uh, uh, the bigger conglomerates, especially the cement companies or the bigger the the, the, the consumer goods companies, realize that most of them already have their own private power plant that they 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 they, they have made using gas turbines, using gas especially. Mm -hmm. But you know the cost of gas production is high, and that's why we are seeing cost of some of these goods and services go up when there is a, a spike in the price of gas. Most of them have their own independent power plant. Even some, even um, look, uh, um, some estate within Lagos and um, Abuja have also generated their own independence plant, and they just use um, um, the, the power holding as, as as standby. And their main companies are the ones that generate electricity to those areas. So we are going to be seeing this sector evolving, evolving, evolving. And the more they evolve, the more they create more uh, 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 um, variety for for customers and also they begin to create value and they they, they decide i really looked at is that once there is market innovation in any in any sector aspect of any economy mm. then you are beginning to see job creation and once you begin to get job creation then you begin to see the value chain begin to improve and improve because once that job creation comes the person that knows that, look, I need to be up to my game to continue to receive salary. So he will be there will be the value to, to be able to handle his customers, mm. to deal with them, not just like what we obtain now, whereby sometimes you call, 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 they have their own customer care, you say there's a problem, you don't see them. No, you begin to see that value because there is competition. Remember sometime in this country, when only one particular uh, communication company was in charge of both mobile and uh, and and, 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 uh, and also also from homes, we line lines and mobile line. We saw how much we suffered. Mm. But immediately we liberalized that sector. People have been enjoying communication, and we have various communication companies right. coming to play. That might be what will be play out in the power sector. But the challenge with the power sector is that it will not be just straight line like what we have obtained in the communication sector. It will revive. It will require a lot of teaching, a lot of technicality to All do right. that. But in the long run, that that value chain will drive. And always know that uh, investors, should investors know that there is value. The power sector has not just been crashed in Nigeria. That's why you see a lot um, a, a, a African Development Bank invest, in, investing in uh, Guregu uh, power plant. Mm. So they, are, they, they know the value, they know the profitability that will come because of the population right. and the number of people that will be in need of electricity. So right. definitely will not be devoid of investors coming into the market. And once investors begin to come, then we are beginning to see the snowball effect in every area of our economy. All right, thank you so much. Especially the area of wealth creation. So, just conclude your thoughts. You were going to say something. Conclude your thoughts. Sorry about that. So what I'll say is that we are, once all this comes to play, mm. then wealth creation will come, prosperity for the people, mm. and then um, they will begin to have value for what they pay for. Well, thank you so much, uh, Mukta, for all that you've said. Uh, beautiful analysis. We do appreciate your time. My pleasure, Justin. All right. Uh, just before we go, over 400 women in Alimosho area of Lagos State have received free digital trading to scale up their businesses. Well, this formed part of the Financial Literacy and Inclusion Program organized by the She Enabled Project in co collaboration with Google. Women in Nigeria are highly interested in becoming entrepreneurs, but face unique challenges, including access to financial and business development services, as well as information that are critical to formalizing and growing their businesses. She Enabled is a financial and digital inclusion project by the Eagle Foundation, which seeks to empower women and girls living in underserved communities in Nigeria. Toluashe Olaniyo is the executive director. He speaks alongside others. It's um, designed to um, support women, uh, particularly women at the grassroots, um, to help them in terms of deepening their financial um, literacy, 
um, financial knowledge and also deepening their digital knowledge. If we have good education, if we have the same training the men do in terms of from primary education, teach them, teach them digitalization, teach them digital transformation, how to move your business, how to scale up. And now with what's going on everywhere, you need to scale up. They have to create more methods to be able to help them understand why it's necessary to have some certain things in place and how those things can be beneficial to them. So for financial institutions, microfinance banks, insurance companies, the regular cluster, they need to be able to change the way they interact, document and how they promote their um, knowledge or disseminate information so that these people can actually benefit. The She Enabled Project addresses the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals 1, 3 and 5, targeting unemployed females living below $2 per day. Some of the participants share concerns and opportunities. There are so many challenges out there, like one, though we are in digital world now, so visibility is part of it. Then secondly, at times financial support. The benefits are actually limitless because we are people from different categories of businesses. We do different things. I don't know when I'll need someone's services. So I feel that events like this will help us meet people outside of our own niche. The major problem is, is the same problem that, we're, that we have always had, right? Um, and we, we, which we all we need to continually um, re-emphasize. It's that, um, I mean, a lot of them feel um, that it's not needed for them as such because they feel that the home is built around the man. According to Global Entrepreneurship Monitor, Nigeria has the highest number of women entrepreneurs in the world. This high level of women's participation in entrepreneurship has been found out to be necessity-driven. That's the size of the show. I am Justin Akadonye. See you again next time.